budgets they have, how they market themselves, things of that nature. Maybe, you know, that would probably also help us get a better handle on what exactly it is we want to do and we want to charge a committee with. And, um, yeah, like I said, I just like to see North Running be the best that it can be. And while I think it's a terrific place, I don't think that in terms of, you know, commercial and, and attracting commercial business and, and letting everybody know what's available now and what might be available tomorrow. Um, once we get sewerage, uh, should we get started? Check some of our passes to see if we have uh, yeah. prime locations for signage, yeah. you know, um, ourselves. Just needs a special permit, maybe, but uh, but things like that. Put it to use. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but um, not that we like billboards. Uh -huh. As long as they <laughs> comply with the CPC <laughs> guidelines for signage on 28. Well, whatever you know, again, whatever we can do and. Um, why don't I put together some of that information to see if the board feels comfortable with that and then the next step might be um, forming a committee if, if the board feels that's the right way to go. I, I don't want to miss the opportunity. Um, certainly not going to come to us. Okay, we'll keep that one to death. <laughs> um, quantify and allocate funds to pension liability. And I know this came from Mr. Leary because I found my sheet where I took my notes. Right. So right. Uh, again, we we the retirement incentives and the uh, teacher incentive program, which have been instituted now, and they have a lot. Uh, they kind of stepped up the, the pace of retirements for some of our public employees, and as a result, our, our liability in that end of things has grown, will be growing substantially at a much more rapid pace, and, and uh, probably sustain itself for a while for the next few years as uh, some of the particular teaching staff. Portion that we have to kick in increases substantially. So it's uh, I think it's just thought it was something that we needed to uh, take a look at, address, particularly uh, budgetary from a budgetary standpoint. Uh, I know the top administrator and finance director will be looking at it anyway. But it's something that uh, in the past has always been kind of put off, and we do a little stop on, you know, stop on the brush by it. You know, once we find out how much we need, we allocate that much and then back into it. Uh, we haven't been able to set anything aside for uh, future liability that we know is going down the road. So I just think it's something we need to keep uh, us head on and prioritize the budgetary process. It's a cost that's expensive that's incurred. I think uh, in, in this area, first, a good first step would be to get both the uh, town and school administration to <coughs> make a five-year projection of who might be retired, obviously. You know, I think you can make a pretty good yes. estimate. And then based on that, look at the impact. And then we can do some planning for the budget. So it's something that I would suggest that we do pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I think that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Um, regards to this, our reserve fund right now, are we at the level that's recommended the one point, what is it, 1.5 million or something like that? Stabilization. Stabilization fund, I'm sorry, not the reserve fund. At stabilization, we are. We are, we're there now, right? And, well, I mean, it's there for an emergency, but it, and I, I know we haven't put a whole lot of money into it uh, lately. Well, we have actually get it back up to the 1.5, but maybe a way to address this is instead of putting money into stabilization, we recommend the money they put into <coughs> this instead at this point in time. As long as our stabilization fund is at the recommended level of the 1.5 million, that we don't put any more money into that fund until we bring this fund up to, or at least try to build this one up to where we need to get it, and, and make that a higher priority at this point than stabilization. Um, I, I wouldn't recommend that if the stabilization would drop some, but as long as that's where it is, then why don't we just switch the priority on these and, and start taking ex, extra money that we have at the end of the year and put it in there instead. Yeah, I think 
budget time comes, that should be a red flag to us if we're putting more money in stabilization. Yeah. But that should be a red, red flag right there because it is um, you know, near the goal of where we need it to be at. Um, so, Tom, were we able to set up some sort of a revolving fund for that previously? We have the retirement trust fund, but, but not necessarily one that you're calling. That's what we want to call pension liability. Retirement trust fund was basically paying out your um, sick leave buybacks, vacation buybacks, from retirement. Uh, primarily, most of that was on the education side, but you just basically have higher numbers and higher retirements. So that's the start, but we already have the fund set up for that. But I don't know if it will take some sort of legislation to set up a similar account for it may for pension liability. If that's the case, we should be looking into establishing something. Say that we don't necessarily have to clean that up yet. Uh, otherwise, you know, just be allocated, doesn't get spent, gets back into the general fund. We need to do it. Just need another set of piggy bank. So I guess there are two steps for, for this goal currently. One would be to, to find to find the account where we could put that and make sure that it's in place. And two would be to have Tom Tracy look at general government and have him talk to Crown Nelson to estimate the school department and to have that go out and I would say to be ready at the same time, you know, in, in the mid, mid to late fall at the same time our budget numbers start uh, to come in. Last year before he retired, George did the finance department uh, have a determine about what the liability would be for all town government employees based on sick leave buyback vacation. We do have that number as last year. Uh, projected for projected um, as of current, not projected out, but uh, let's say in my case, 15 years now, if, if I retire today, what the liability would be for today? Well, it was not projected out 15 years now. Just a follow up question on what you're saying. You made a projection based on the entire workforce? Workforce, uh, what basically if everybody left as a board of Literally, because this was going through the early retirement. Well, that was because of the early right. retirement. Right, yeah. yeah. Is we have those numbers, but we don't have projections going out if everyone stays till they're 65. No. Well, there should be some you know, actual early reasonable do assumption. That. Yeah. It's made not a draconian assumption one way or the other that everyone's going to retire today or everyone's right. going to stay until the last possible day. They can, I would imagine. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
I look in the numbers that we've had here, with the exception of the early retirements, uh, I don't think you would have probably seen those retirements happen <coughs> during that time period. But we ask those who are qualified to get the So then, so then their, their budgets now do have the sick time and buyback in them for regular retirements? Am well, I asking this? Well, our goal was always to have that if it was available, to put that money into the trust fund. Because the trust fund that was developed was to be both for both education and general government. And should they announce in December, then within that fiscal year, we can project put that money into the trust fund in April town meeting. I was just going to comment to Joe that the, the whole idea of creating this fund is to, to balance out any spikes that might be. Basically, is to put a certain amount of money away each year, not necessarily spend it this year, but you know, let's say two years from now, a whole slew of people retire. You know, we're not taking it all out on that one right. budget year. It just it tends to stabilize. We're just trying to stabilize things instead of running through the spikes, the peaks and valleys. We have no one leave the police department that helps in the four. Right. I mean, if you knew those four were going, but yeah, okay, no, that's fine. I just wanted to ask that question. Kevin. Uh, Tom, is, is it a contractual issue? Um, or is it, does it have to go through the, the, the contracts and so forth in order to, to tell the employees that we need to be notified? at the beginning of the year, or buyback will occur the following fiscal year, so that it, it can be budgeted that way. So that, in other words, if you said that you have to declare by, uh, I don't know, pick a date, December 30th or something, in order to be paid off during the fiscal year, or, or I don't know what date would work best, but is that something that would have to be negotiated into contracts, or is that something that we could implement unilaterally, and that we need to know now, want to get your buyback this year or you'll have to wait if you were to retire in the interim you'll have to wait until the next fiscal year uh, I would not publicly answer that question because should I wish to do that it will be a detriment of how we implement it you got it that's, that's a could be a part of the contractual question I don't want to uh, show my hand no. the, the school department does have in their contract a, a notification there's a spreading out over two years or something now or something like that? I think where possible. I don't know that the contract says that. I think where possible, Crown Nelson tries to do that. I shouldn't speak for them. I could be wrong. But they do have a date certain by which they need to be notified. In order to be, to get their buybacks? No. Well, I think to retire, you know, I don't, I guess in order to get their buybacks. Because you can retire. I mean, yeah. they can't make you. Well, it must, <laughs> work. yeah. yeah. Um, it must be that, be that. But I know that as a date certain mm -hmm. that something may negotiate into the contract, right? I agree. I can answer this though. If let's say uh, Mr. Callahan retired and there's nothing that says he can't turn in retire tomorrow, I think it would be difficult for me to retire and then say, oh by the way, you're not going to get your buyback for another year. Well that's that, that's today, but I'm just talking about if looking into the future, if you if you begin the next fiscal year say, look, we need to declare now. We just, I mean, budget-wise, budget, budget -wise, I think what we're trying to do is just tighten it up so that we can, as you know, as Joe pointed out, if, if we could just budget this into, into everybody, and in each department's budget, we wouldn't be faced with over. I, I just don't want to say at this point whether it's contractually negotiable or not. Okay. I'm saying at this point, though, in these cases, there's nothing there that says you have to notify us by X amount of date to receive your sick leave by that application by that time. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, 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 I think along the line, Mr. Kelly, again, I'm very familiar with another town, a local town to us. And what they have is you have to give a six month notice to get your buyback on your retirement. And then you have to take it. You don't get to give that notice again. You lose your buyback. That's what another town has. I'm, I'm not. I'm not asking for that. I'm just saying that. But that's the type of things that another towns do. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the, 